Have you ever felt as if you're living inside of a cage? Have you ever felt as if something or someone is holding you back? Have you ever felt that it doesn't matter how much effort and responsibility you take, things will still fail? Have you ever felt as if you are in a negative spiral? If you ever felt like this, and you have convictions in your mind that that you are stuck and that no matter what you try, it always seems hopeless, then listen to me, you are in a cage. I'm not talking about a literal physical cage like they have in prisons or like they have in zoos. I'm talking about spiritual cages and also emotional cages. See... In my previous podcast, I've talked about breaking spells. You see? Now, I'm going to continue with that. Not about how to break spells, but how many people are in spiritual and emotional cages. Because you need to understand this. Human beings are spirit beings with souls living in bodies. So, the spirit dimension is dominant over the physical. The physical dimension is nothing but a reflection of what's going on in the spirit realm. So, if you are in financial financial difficulty, it's because there is a spiritual cage in the spirit realm where, where lines have been drawn upon your financial life. Listen to me carefully. Everything that happens on earth, it has a spiritual origin. When you have to deal with human beings and human interaction, everything about human beings are human beings is spiritual. So listen, that's why when people speak negative words upon your life, you need to reject those words, reject their judgment about you. You need to proclaim the word of God and God's promises upon your life. And in the name of Jesus Christ, and by the blood of Jesus Christ, you break all those satanic agreements that people have against you. You need to do that. You can. I'm not saying that if someone insults you or when someone comes with a knife to you that you always have to respond verbally, that can be dangerous. However, once the offender has left, you need to speak out in faith. And you need to, conf- and you need to resist the curse that someone has spoken upon you. Listen to me carefully. Because if you do not resist the negative negative expectations and the negative decrees of others, if you don't resist it, those negative words will attract antimatter towards you. Antimatter is demonic energy. Negative energy. And those negative words, those negative decrees will, attr- will form a, an, an invisible cage around you. An invisible cage of negative energy. And with it, ne- negative energy comes demonic spirits. That will exercise the decrees that those people have spoken upon you. You see? Words have power. Now, I'm not, no, 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 no. Let me, rep- let me correct myself. The intention of words have power. For example... Um, Heere Heere is Dutch for Lord but Heere comes from Heere that's ancient Greek for pig it's a mocking way to say to, it's a way to basically cast someone out so, so if someone says Heere in ancient Greek, you would say, who he's cussing someone, but in Dutch, it's just Lord. So the sounds that come out of your mouth, though, the sounds out of your mouth don't have any power, okay? Anyone can say any word. It doesn't mean that those words have power. It's the intent behind those words that, that have power. So if someone speaks something about you with a negative intent, that negative intent will release negative energy to follow the words that you've spoken about, uh, about you. So you need to resist the spell. You need to believe in the grace of God and the goodness and and loving kindness of God all the time. You see? Because listen, listen to what I'm saying. 
when you live in a cage. You often are not aware that you are living in a cage. You are just thinking, I am free, I am just doing my thing. And that's how most people live. And they no, don't realize that they are living in a spiritual and emotional prison. And after a while, they will even begin to defend the prison they are in. Thinking that they are just being real. That they are being reasonable. Look. It, um, I'm going to talk about with wizards and witches now because those people you may have some of them in your own family those people are agents of satan to keep you in a prison you see let, let, let me get this, let, let me explain this to you when you have people in your life people are in your who have come who have access to you and those people I'm not talking about people who, cause you, who who speak negative things about you. I'm not talking about people who hate you. I'm not talking about people who spit at you. I'm not talking about people who, who overtly do evil towards you. I'm not talking about those because those people, you, they are tr- uh, you, you see immediately they are trash. I'm talking about those people who appear to have the best interest for you, but it's only to serve their own benefit. So someone may pretend to care about you, but it's only, but they're only doing kind to you so that you will do kind to them so that they can have something to blackmail you later on. You know, such an individual, they're basically practicing witchcraft on behalf of Satan upon your life. Okay? And um, such relationships are negative. Now, listen to me, I'm not saying that if someone does something kind for you, that you have need to be suspicious, okay? I'm not telling you to be suspicious all the time, because being suspicious is, by itself, something negative. Always looking for something negative, even when you can't find it. I'm not tell, telling you to become like that. I'm just making clear to you that not every warm and fussy relationship is a benefit to you. You need to be, you need to test the spirits, because there are people with demon spirits attached to them. And those demon spirits will use those human beings to do Satan's will in your life. And they will not all and they will not come in a hostile manner. Because if they would come in a hostile manner you would resist them immediately. I'm talking about things like this. Let's say that you are in poverty now, but you want to you want to get out. Then you may have some, you want to attend a university. And it can be that there are people around you who understand that at universities people are racist and people um, are into sects. And that at many universities, not all, but at many universities, it's about who you know, not what you know. So you have an idea that the university system is, you know, certain you just have to make your test and you succeed and then you get a job. Then you may have people who know the reality and they will tell you, um, John or Sarah, I don't know what your name is, it's a good idea that you want to get rid of poverty, but um, don't expect that by just having a university degree that things will be get all right. Let's say someone says that to you and someone says, it's basically a reality that someone is showing you, it's a true fact. However, with which intent do they say it to you? Are they saying it to you because they want to help you to get out of poverty? Or are they just saying it because they just wanted to say it and because they don't really or because they don't really want you to get to get out of poverty? Because if you're in poverty, then you need others. And others who have resources have an advantage over you. Once you're out of poverty, you no, those other people don't have that advantage anymore. So when you they're seeing that you're getting out of your 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 mess, they know they will lose an advantage. So now they will try to pretend to have the best interest for you and they will use true facts in order to keep you in poverty. You see? Or let's say you are in a destructive marriage. You see? And now and people are talking bad about you, about your marriage. Let's say you get out of that marriage, okay? And um, 
you're free now from uh, emotional and physical and sexual abuse. Now, why would someone want to keep you in an abusive such circumstance? In this case, there are other people who may not even be married, but they are enduring a lot of abuse and taking a lot of stuff. Yeah, they don't want to deal with that issue in their life, but they do, but they do want to talk about you. So when you leave an abusive marriage, then that reality would reflect upon themselves and they would realize, hold on a minute, why I am not willingly to do anything with my life, I am setting and tolerating everything. And he or she at least had the courage to leave. So then they will become embarrassed of themselves. So when they see that you're making the right decision, they will try to prohibit it. And don't get me wrong, sometimes such people will use violence and intimidation, but often they will come in a friendly manner in order to have their way. So, listen, I'm not saying that you should never listen to other people. Okay, because people can have something valuable to say. Something, people can have valuable information for you. Okay? However, you need to test the spirits to see whether those people have demon spirits within. You see? Because listen, if someone is not connected to the Holy Spirit, then they are connected to demon spirits. Now, I'm not saying that if someone does not, isn't born again, that someone immediately is demon possessed. No. But if you don't have the Spirit of God living inside of you, then you have an empty hole in your life. And in that emptiness, demon spirits have the ability to manipulate you all very easily, without you being aware of it. If even Christians who have the Holy Spirit can be manipulated by demon spirits, then how much more can a sinner who is not born again be manipulated by demon spirits? I'm not saying that if someone is an unbeliever that they have evil intentions towards you immediately. No. But if they don't have God, then demon spirits have free access towards them. I'm not saying that demon spirits can enter in them whenever demon spirits want because someone must be very negative before demon spirits can possess them. You see? Or if someone is a child, the parents should must have placed a demon inside of the child by their evil behavior. So someone can be free from demon spirits inside of them, but still be under demonic influence. And demon spirits will always use people around you to, to access you. They will use your wife, or if you're a woman, they will use your husband, they will use your children, they will use your parents, uh, grandparents, grandchildren, they will use your boss, your fellow students. Demon spirits will not use people from the internet. If you have online contacts, Demon spirits can use those people, but often the demon spirits will not use such people because such people are at a distance. So they don't have a direct access to, to your existence. You see? So being in a cage, you see? When you're in a cage, you may not even realize it. So that's why when... No, 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 let me go, let me go further. When you are annoyed by something, it's because you want to protect something. And the thing is, when you're in a cage, you are protecting basically something that you should let go of. Because that's how people get into cages, you see. When people insult you, or when people say negative things about you, they are attacking your inherent value and of course your natural response is i need to protect my inherent value and i need to protect myself from being harmed again those two reactions are reasonable and they make sense completely however the most high made clear put your trust in me and i will vindicate you i will avenge you you see so when you hold on to your natural response then you call you you that you are basically helping your enemies to build that cage to keep you in. That's why the most I made clear: do not avenge yourself, but leave place for wrath, because vengeance is mine; I will repay. God will repay you for trusting in Him, and God will repay your enemies for for harming you. However, that's God's job. When you're in a cage, 
you are holding on to something. Maybe it's not your inherent value that you're protecting. Maybe it's a relationship. Maybe it's a benefit. But when you're in a cage, there's something you're holding on to that you need to let go of. And the thing is, as long as you're holding on to that, ob- as long as you're holding on to that thing, the cage will remain. Because in order for the cage, the spiritual and emotional cage, to remain functioning, you need to be distracted. Because the moment you're aware that you're in a cage, you see the black magic, it's broken. I'm not saying that the the effects of the black magic are gone, but the black magic is broken, the spell is broken. And now, you're getting free. And once the spell is broken, those people that enforce the spell upon you, they will suffer serious consequences. And also the environment that saw that you were under a spell, but chose to ignore it. That's how it works. So, That's why, you see, when you get annoyed or irritated or frustrated, you need to examine yourself in light of the scripture, in light of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Not at the hand of psychological tests and all of that, in the light of scripture, the Bible and the Holy Spirit, you need to examine yourself. Okay, your response... Your natural response may be your natural response may be right, maybe natural, maybe good. If someone tries to harm you, you should feel resistance and shocked by it, of course. But then still examine yourself. Even then, examine yourself because if you're holding on to something, it, it can be something good and something neutral. If you're holding on to something that's keeping you in a cage, you, you are basically also hell harming yourself. That's why, listen to me, people that are difficult towards you, you see, I'm not saying that you have to be happy with their difficulty towards you. I'm not saying that you should um, in, should become insane by thanking those people for being negative towards you. No. If someone is negative and hostile towards you, it's wrong. Period. Nevertheless, such circumstances can be a blessing to you because when you become annoyed, when you become irritated at it, it's an eye is an eye opener to for you to begin to ask yourself why am I irritated? Why do I react this way? It's an eye opening for you to see that that individual is negative and it's also an eye opening for you to see why to, to ask yourself why are they negative? And why am I reacting like this? You see? And then you begin to think, you begin to see, hold on. Why do I value this so much? Why do I avoid that that much? So, look, do not, I repeat, do not look for hostile people. Of course you will not do it because that's not, that's against your human, your human design. You're not doing that. But what I mean, what I mean by don't look for hostile people is don't look for people who make you comfortable you see and that's what we tend to do all the time we tend to look for people who make us comfortable at least our definition of comfort which is fuzzy feelings and confirming our ideas that are in our head and always speaking good about us that's the kind of people we always tend to look for is there something wrong with having people that are comfortable no but don't make it your life goal to have comfortable people around you. You know why? Because demon spirits will use those so-called comfortable relationships to keep you in a cage. To keep you bonded. You see, and listen to me, when you are in a spiritual and emotional cage, you are open. Let me tell you, you are open and vulnerable to all kinds of attacks, sickness, diseases, and you can even die prematurely. You can even die before your time. So this is something very serious, guys. When you are in a cage, you are basically a prisoner. When you are living in a cage, you are promoting the kingdom of darkness. I mean the power of darkness. You see, I'm a bit uncomfortable with saying kingdom of darkness, but anyway, 
When you are living in a cage, you are advancing the, power, the agenda of the powers of darkness. One common form of living in a cage is worrying. Yes, you heard me, worrying. When you worry, you see, you are basically showing your, let me say, your dedication to the idol that keeps you in a cage. Right? So, worrying is basically a prisoner, a captive, that's complaining that their presence isn't working well. That's what worrying is. When you worry, you basically do not show any trust in God. You focus upon the upon the problem or the issue. And basically you lock yourself in a prison mindset. Or they call it a tunnel vision in psychology. And when you have a tunnel vision or a prison mindset, you are you are not capable of receiving divine help and you're not capable of receiving objective advice that will benefit you. So stop worrying. When, you see, that's why, for example, in the Netherlands, once you become 18, you're overwhelmed with, you need to pay, um, you need to pay an insurance, you need to pay healthcare, you need to pay this, you need to do that, you're overwhelmed with all kinds of expectations because you're grown up now. Why is that the government and the institutions of the Netherlands, they are putting a spell on you by overwhelming you with all that, those expectations? See, and many people here are, don't realize it. They think, well, I'm, I'm grown up now as an adult, you have responsibility, so just need, I just need to grow up and deal with it. No. It's a spell they're placing on you. The Most High makes clear, Put all, cast all your cares on me because I take care of you. What does the government say? You're grown up now. You live in a society. There are so many things going on. You need to take care of yourself. You need to do this. You need to do that. And the thing is, a lot of people take the bait. A lot of people accept the lie. The lies that they're being told. And because of that, many people young people end up in a cage and they grow older and they grow old in a cage they die and they never reach their full potential they never really walk in the purpose of God for their lives and they miss out on many opportunities and many blessings that they, that were meant for them why because in their young young years they've accepted the spells of their community and of the government and of their and of the school and of their families and they were proud also by not wanting to admit that there's something wrong and they need to give up. They became attached to their cage and they grew old and years passed them by. You see? Um there are more things I can say about this, just remember. When someone is in a cage, they will become very hostile. Let me say there, everyone that lives in a cage is very, very hostile. Let me say extremely hostile towards those that are free. We all were captives in cages in our lives. And we all had to be made free. So when you are free, people, remember that captives will see you as a threat. Why? Because that, let me just give another word for a spiritual emotional cage, a comfort zone. Or, let me say different, a private life, private sphere, personal space. Personal space, private life, private sphere are just other words, other terms for a spiritual cage. We call it private life because when you call it private life, it gives you an, a sense of power. It's my life. It's private. When you call it personal space, it gives you a sense of entitlement. Entitlement is personal. It's about me. And we, and we like that. 
we like to have so-called personal space. We have to like have so-called privacy, because those th- those words give us a feeling and a sense of empowerment and control. Private, personal. That means I can exclude people. It means I have control here. It's a lie. The thing we call privacy and the thing we call personal space is nothing but a spiritual cage. That's all it is. And we are defending that cage with our lives. We are attacking other people that invade our our prison cell. And yet people think that it's freedom. It's not freedom. It's not freedom, people. And there are many Christians who are also in cages still. And they defend the chains of the enemy. They are defending the chains that Satan has has captured them in. Luke, at chapter 16, A chain is a chain. You can call it a iron rope because a chain, I'm talking about literal physical chains now. A a literal physical chain is an iron rope basically because it's of iron. You can call it um, a piece of art. You can call it decoration. You can call it all of that because you know, an iron chain can also be a decoration indeed. But it's still a chain. When it's wrapped around you, it's still a chain. You see? So don't judge too quickly when you see people getting ahead in life. When you see that someone is getting married and you're not, don't be, don't think that I must have done something wrong or I'm in a disadvantage. When you see that other people are graduating quicker than you and you still have difficulty with your, with your course, don't worry about it. Or when you see as if other people are making money and having all going on vacation, going to parties, don't think, you know, I'm missing out on something. Because listen to me carefully. Most curses come disguised as a benefit. The, you know, the Apostle Paul made clear in the New Testament that Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. And the ministers of Satan, those are demon spirits, Masquerade as ministers of righteousness. So if demon spirits, both fallen angels and Nephilim spirits, if they present themselves as ministers of righteousness, then what? why can't they, why can't they um, use people to impact your circumstances, to give you so-called solutions, as if though they are helping you. Why do you why do people are so why are so many Christians so ignorant into thinking that demon spirits only cause direct pain and harm? No. Demon spirits can also cause comfort in your life. You see? But catch this. They are cause they causing you comfort in your life? That's true. You you're not aware that demon spirits did that? So you think, oh, things are going well for me now? And you think, well, this must be from God. And of course, you're comfortable and you think it's alright. But, it's a cage. Because now you're stuck in that comfort. You're not expanding anymore. You're not growing anymore. You're not reaching out to people anymore. You're not having an impact anymore. So folks, Begin to be renewed in your mind. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Don't live in the old mindset of the world. Be transformed. This is serious, people. This is very serious. Well, this being said, you all, be blessed and may Jesus' grace be with you.